Once upon a time, there was a boy who lived up in the dusty orange mountains with his grandpa. At first, he didn't notice that caring for him was an annoyance for the old man. But as he got a little older, the boy realized that he wasn't wanted around. He could tell from the sighs that escaped from the old man's lips at even the smallest of questions or needs. At some point, the boy stopped asking for any attention and stayed out of the way. His going to school was a relief for the both of them. The boy would daydream about green landscapes as he trekked from their lonely hut amongst the rocks down several miles to where the schoolhouse was. Then there came a day when a feared creature was seen on a remote trail coming towards the village. It was a woman with vibrant hair and skin flushed with blood and vigor. The grandpa knew what she was as soon as he spotted her flaming cloud of hair from across the mountain, coming closer at a leisurely pace. Before the grandson could take off for school, the old man called him over. He hurried to the shed, where he took out a large bundle of rope. Follow me, boy, he said, tensely. Hurry! He was confused, but the boy obeyed, and followed his grandpa's run on a path beyond their home. The old man took him to a crop of tall standing rock and pushed the boy against it. Stay still, he snapped. Again, the boy obeyed, but asked fearfully, What is it? What is this for? The old man tied the rope around the boy's wrists and wound the rest around the rock, pinning him there. The boy tried to search his grandpa's face, but he would not meet his eyes. The old man fumbled with knotting the rope. He said, don't move from there, and he took off again, breathing raggedly. The boy began to cry, understanding that, for whatever reason, he had been abandoned. He cried a year's worth of tears until a woman came from behind a bend in the road. He gawked at her colorful, tremorous presence, and she looked over him with a wide smile and shining teeth. He shivered when she crouched on a rock and bent close to his face, sniffing like a cat. Do you know what I am? She asked in a low, husky voice. He nodded sadly, causing her to burst out laughing. You look miserable. Where is your fear? It's here, he answered. But he couldn't stop thinking of what his grandpa had done. Don't worry, she said, eyeing the tender young flesh wrapped in rope. I won't taste you. She lifted her gaze beyond the winding trail. I'll go for the one who's left you here. The boy couldn't believe it. Loosen yourself, she ordered. That I will not do for you. And she took off at a comfortable jog without another look back. The boy waited to see if this was a game that a cat might play before its meal, but minutes passed, and then he moved, wiggling this way and that. She had guessed correctly. The boy was able to raise the hastily bound loops of rope up from the rocks, and he ran home with it still tied to his wrists. The boy stayed home from school that day. When sunset came, he prepared his own meal and ate in silence. It was strange, the sense of relief he felt when the old man didn't return, even a week after he'd been set free. Hi. I hope you enjoyed that little story. I do realize I said the boy many, many times. This scene is from a dream I had many years ago. I wonder who would choose to live in such a desolate place with all these dusty, hot rocks. Um, the landscape reminds me of spaghetti western movies, where there are many little towns set in hellscapes like this. But no! No thank you, um, I would rather pack up my bags and leave for a nicer place. It's still summery and hot here, so I feel like I'm actually in this painting, uh, but the days have been getting cooler. I'm looking forward to fall season, witchy season, cold weather, yeah, nice. Stay safe, I guess, um, and I hope you get lots of vitamin D. Bye.